There are five critical decisions that you need to consider before you start building your model railroad layout, and we're going to talk about them on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroading tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Benjamin Franklin is reported to have originated the saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Well, whoever first said it, that is such a true statement for so many things in life, including your model railroading efforts. If you go about building a model railroad layout or doing model railroad projects without some sort of plan, then you are destined to be dissatisfied with your results. You're destined to build things that you want to tear out and tear up and redo. Ultimately, you're destined for frustration. And those frustrations that are caused by our failure to plan often can cost us dearly in both time and money invested. Before you start building a layout, before you draw a track plan, before you even buy your first locomotive or piece of rolling stock, there are some very important considerations that you need to take into account. These considerations, these decisions will impact everything you do on your layout, from your bench work to your track plan to your scenery and structures and even the locomotive and rolling stock that you buy in both style and size. So I'm going to talk to you about what I believe are the five critical decisions that you need to make before you start building your layout. Do you know of some other considerations people should take into account before they start building a layout? If so, leave a comment down below and tell us about them. Hey everybody, before we get to today's video content, just a quick announcement. I want you to know that the voting is open for the People's Choice Award in the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest. And I hope that you'll all go check out the finished products of those guys who have weathered these freight cars for this contest and vote for your favorites. You can do that at www.midwestmodelrr.com front slash DDWC. I'll put a link to that down in the description. There you can go, you can see all the contestants, you can see still photos of the freight cars that they've weathered, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you can vote for your three favorites. So I hope you'll go vote for your favorites. Uh, voting will be open through March 25th, and all of the winners in the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest will be announced in my one year anniversary video on April 3rd, so be sure and watch for that. But in the meantime, go vote for your favorites in the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest. Now, let's get to today's model railroading content. The first critical decision you need to make is the setting of your layout. What prototype do you intend to model? What era do you intend to set your model railroad layout in? What region or location do you want to model? Even if you're planning to build a completely freelance layout, it's going to be set in some location related to the real world. The setting of the prototype, the era, and the region will have a huge impact on the scenery that you're going to build. It'll have a huge impact on the locomotives and the rolling stock that you buy. It'll have a huge impact on the structures that you build and put on your layout. It can even impact your bench work. So it's very important that before we begin building our layout or even drawing a track plan, we have some idea of what the setting of our model railroad layout is going to be. The second important decision that we need to make has to do with the service of our layout. What is it that you want your model railroad to do, or what is it that you want to do with your model railroad layout? Do you plan to model scale operations? Do you plan to model yard switching or local industrial switching? Do you want to focus on mainline run? Is your primary objective to be able to rail fan your own trains or display them for guests? These decisions about what you want your model railroad to do have a huge impact on your track plan. Obviously, if you're going to model yard operations, you need to make sure that you allow enough space to be able to build a yard that will do what you want it to do. If you're planning on focusing on industrial switching, you want to be able to make sure you have room for the structures that you need to represent those industries, and also that you have enough space to put in all of the turnouts that you need to get those sidings in to be able to model those industries. If mainline running is your focus, then you want to make sure that you build bench work and track work that will allow for the scenery that will help you to enjoy the mainline run and the rail fanning and the photographs and the videos that you want to take on that mainline. 
The third important decision we need to make is the scope of our railroad. Is it going to focus on one switching industrial area? Is it going to focus on one town? Are you planning to model a couple of towns with switching in each with a long mainline run in between? Do you want to model the slow pace of a branch line or the fast pace of a modern day main line? Maybe you have a lot of space and you're planning to represent an entire subdivision on your layout. Whatever the scope of your layout, it's going to impact the amount of space required in order to house that layout. It's going to impact the way that you build your bench work. And of course, it's going to impact the budget of both time and money that you need to be able to build that layout. So it's very important that we consider the scope of the layout that we want to build. Fourth, we need to consider the scale that we want to build in. Now, this may be one of the first considerations most of us take into account, but it's very important to have an idea of what scale we're working in before we even start to plan. Obviously, scale is impacted by our space constraints. If we want to model a lot of main line and we don't have a lot of space, then a smaller scale like in scale may be the perfect scale for us to be able to do what we need to do. On the other hand, if we want to do a lot of super detailing of our locomotives and rolling stock, we like all of those tiny little details, uh, a larger scale like HO or O scale may be better for us. Scale has an impact on operations as different scales operate with their own positives as well as their own quirks. Availability of commercial products may impact your choice of scale. Some scales that are less common, like in scale or a narrow gauge, will have less products commercially available, and so we may have to consider our desire for scratch building or for kit bashing in order to get the things that we want. Are we willing to put in the time to build the skills to be able to do that scratch building and that kit bashing that will be required if we do one of those less common scales? And for some people, eyesight and dexterity plays into which scale that we choose. Now, I'm going to admit that as an inscaler, I hear all the time the excuse, I can't do inscale because it's too small for me to see or because my fingers aren't nimble enough to work in that scale. Sometimes I think those are exaggerated, but limitations in dexterity and eyesight certainly will play a consideration whenever it comes to the scale that we choose. So we've talked about making decisions about our setting, the service of our model railroad, the scope, the scale that we're going to model in. But finally, we need to make decisions about our standards with regard to our model railroad before we start building. Too often, standards are decisions that are left as an afterthought, considered after we've gotten far along in the building process of our layout. But our standards need to be something that guide us from the moment we begin to put pencil to paper or work on a computer to plan a track plan. We need to have standards set for ourselves about things like minimum curve radius, maximum grade, minimum turnout, track spacing, and other standard considerations. These things are important because A, they can be partially determined by the era and the region that we're modeling, the type of railroad that we're modeling. But also, they will have an impact on the size of locomotives that we're able to run, on the length of rolling stock that we're able to run, as well as the types of scenery that will surround our track. There are a few things more frustrating than building a portion of a layout only to begin to run our rolling stock and locomotives on it and realize that it doesn't look right because the curves are too tight and the cars hang over to the inside or they want to uncouple and streamline or pull themselves off of the track because of the tight curvature. Too small of turnouts can make a huge difference in the way our model railroads operate also. Track spacing is very important when it comes to running longer locomotives and rolling stock because the overhang can cause them to actually run into each other on parallel curves. All of these standards are very important and will impact how we plan our track plan, and that track plan will impact how we build our bench work and everything that comes after. So these are five critical decisions that we need to make before we begin not only building our model railroad layout, but before we even begin planning it. So take some time to consider these decisions. Make sure that you have planned to succeed before you start building your layout. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more videos I know you'll enjoy as well. Before you leave, be sure and check out that description down below where you'll find links to my Amazon page, my Amazon pick of the week, and in those you'll find some great model railroading products and products for photography and video making. But even if you do just your regular Amazon shopping through those links, 
You'll get the same great prices and service that you get every day on Amazon, and you'll help support this channel at the same time. So I hope you'll check those out. You'll also see a link to my Patreon page, as well as ways that you can connect with me on social media there in the description. I hope you'll join me again next Tuesday as I bring you another model railroading segment, and I look forward to seeing you then. Ten, Lizzie?